What? What's the matter? Which one of you's hurt? Go inside, children, and wash your hands. In a minute, you're going to hear some lovely news. The rabbits had more rabbits. I thought Flopsy was female. We all thought Flopsy was female. Oh, they've got no fur and they look like animated giblets. No wonder the girls are traumatized. I think baby rabbits are actually called kittens. Patrick, this is going to be educational enough. sterile gauze. I had two rolls here and now I've only one. I've not touched it. Are you sure? I'd know if I had. Goodness. I prefer you two when you're smoking. <clears throat> I could never see the attraction of cigarettes myself. Me neither. I can't bear the smell. Well, must be wonderful to be so saintly. Personally, I always think those who struggled with temptation are far more interesting. Sorry if I, I couldn't resist. Honestly, you could have at least have used a knife. Mm. That actually quite suits you. What about? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very Jean Shrimpton. Stop it. <laughs> Sister Julianne. A word, if I may. Well, of course. I find the exuberance of young love a joy to behold and essential for the progression of the human race. I do enjoy a doctor that's easy on the eye. Few and far between at St. Cuthbert's, I can tell you that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I bid you all a good night. Good evening. Dr. Turner, if we could prevail upon a few more minutes of your time, it would be much appreciated, Nurse Crane. Oh, perhaps you would be so kind as to pass this along to your colleagues. Bathroom roster. You'll find punctuality is imperative at Nonata's house. It would appear we're last on the list. I'm glad to see there's nothing wrong with your observation skills. We'll need hot water for shaving. We do have a kettle. <clears throat> Trippin's the ticket, dear. Kindly furnish me with writing materials. I'll pin an IOU. Any sign of um, Julie Andrews' face, sister? Oh. I think my feelings relate to my father. Go on. He was uh, very much absent from my childhood. Snap. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon via Poplar. Fred Buckle, have you been drinking? Only in the line of duty, ma'am. We had quite a few signed up in the black sale. Hmm? Reggie is a genius. Well, we knew that. We went up to the new flats, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and guess what? It's a hotbed of competition. We had loads of entries for our, uh, as of today, Brand new horticultural category. Best hanging basket, best window box, and best horticultural use of a flat balcony. And me and him is gonna build the hanging gardens of Babylon to show it all off. Well, I am impressed, very impressed. Well done, you two. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> 56,000 people. How on earth are they going to hear at the back? 
What must it be like to have 56,000 women screaming at you? A bad day to choose to clinic, I should imagine. Someone appears to have been taking midwifery supplies without signing for them. Well, it certainly wasn't me. Not all me. Mm, I have my suspicions. Eight soft yarn blankets, freshly laundered. And don't bother denying it, sister, because I can see them sticking out from under your pillows. Perhaps the sister intended it as a place of peaceful contemplation. Sister Monica Joan, I've offered to help on numerous occasions. This is supposed to be a garden. Where are the flowers? The flowers of St. Raymond are the most beautiful flowers of the day. <laughs> Nurse Crane is looking for a volunteer to help her. I'd happily do it. I've got too many other commitments just now. Hmm. Would his name be Cyril, by any chance? Master Cyril, if you wouldn't mind. You seem to have settled into popular remarkably well. Now I've tasted Granger's fish and chips, I won't be leaving in a hurry. Sister, would you like to try one? I will oblige, but only in the interest of historical research. I wish to know if they're as good as they used to be. <laughs> um, swing from the elbows. Left to right or right to left? Do you think you might fare better if you traded those Oxford things for some plimsolls? That might give him more bounce on the ball of his foot. Nobody wears plimsolls to a discotheque. <laughs> Kevin? The warden from the men's night shelter telephoned. They've had a death and it needs to be certified. Oh, no. What's she doing here? This hasn't been properly managed at all. It's been managed with my patient's best interest in mind, as I'm sure it has with yours. I don't want to be here, and I don't want to be here looking at her. You're not the only lady in need of care. Miss Bevin has her own concerns and her own requirements. It's a shame she hasn't got her own boyfriend. Eddie and me were caught in for two years. We're engaged. Oh, you thought you were. This is a maternity ward and you are expectant mothers, not fishwives. I advise you both to concentrate on keeping well and to put your personal circumstances to one side. Where's my girl? Oh. Hello, love. I'll go and put these in a vase. Or two. Wait, this here. Tom, um, 2,000 feet, this will fly up too. Right, right yeah. It's all well and good, the flying squad racing in through those doors, but when they race out again without the mother's notes, it's slightly less impressive. Now, if you need my assistance, my price is a mince pie. Well, I was doing ten shows a week up until two months ago. I'm an aerialist. I spend half my life on a trapeze. I shall be vexed if I hear of you going anywhere near a trapeze until well after Bibi has arrived. <laughs> oh, you never know. Might shake something loose. Some of us, when faced with an obstacle in life, make prayer our primary port of call. Others go to a rather smart agency in Mayfair and ask to be introduced to some nice chaps. She's written me off as a failure without taking into account any of my professional accomplishments or my personal achievements. Do you know what she did for a living? Croupier? She was a hand model. She used to hold bottles of hand cream and washing up liquid in advertisements. I'm opening the petticoat tails. I suspect we may need two each. You can't eat the petticoat tails. They've been put away for Christmas. I would not object to being served tea. You aren't permitted anything 
in case they decide that you need an operation. I've already spoken to the doctor about your x-rays. It is an unnatural business to have one's inner framework exposed to the casual observer. The soul itself might be made visible. He made no mention of any spiritual discovery. He did say that your hips were both intact, which is miraculous in someone of your age. You speak of me as though I am an ancient crone who cannot expect to survive a simple stumble down the stairs. But you have sustained a nasty double fracture of the lower leg and broken both your tibia and your fibula. You will not, I fear, be home in time for Christmas or any time soon thereafter. Leopold Morris, 58, solvent, retired actuarial scientist, a strong interest in Victorian taxidermy, moderate pulmonary problems which are well controlled by medication in the main. I shudder to think what decrepitude those last three syllables imply. <laughs> Do you have any advice to offer, Cyril? Hmm? Uh, I think you are a good-looking lady. You'll be a fool to tie yourself down to an old man who'd rather look at dead animals than take you dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just draw a line on the anyone called Leopold. This one is called John. He is a recently widowed teacher with three little girls. He isn't looking for romance, he's looking for a nanny. Sister Hilda, we're meant to be working on the Christmas dinner plans. Indeed we are. This is Nanata's house. I'm afraid that I'm not a midwife. What fresh cataclysm has befallen that you are deployed as a telephonist? Sister Monica Drone, you haven't managed to escape yet? The infirmary authorities have conspired against me. I thought Sister Julian was coming to visit you this evening. She has departed, leaving little in her wake except a mound of indifferent grapes and a conversational desert. How about Lucille and I come and see you? And bring some tangerines and a bit of black bun. If you so wish, I have no objection. But I advise that you attend forthwith, for I intend to be discharged by Christmas. Two bicycles, all wrapped up and ready to send to Father Christmas. Mommy, can I come for a drink of water? Stay where you are. Mommy's going to bring you one up. I don't like the look of the turkeys at the butchers. We'll order ours from Fred Buckle. <laughs> Give us a kiss, sister. Put me out of my misery. I shall put you over my knee if you don't let me pass. <laughs> oh. Patrick, that turkey is supposed to be oven ready. It's dead. What's Fred playing at? Oh. It's a start. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm telephoning the Nazis' house to see if they have any room at the inn. 